What's up guys? I keep getting a few questions about the Omex rev limiter kit that I have installed on the Capri here so I thought I'd make a quick tech tip video about it. Is it easy to install? Does it work well? Well yes and yes. So let's take a closer look at it. Okay so rev limiter why well simply because these engines did not come with one out of the factory meaning the limiting factor on how hard you could rev the engine would be if you were lucky valves bouncing or valve flow it's not ideal uh, but it kind of works but then if you've modified the engine like me and fitted stiffer valve springs for example that means that you can potentially rev the engine harder before the valves bounce but then your limiting factor might become things like conrods or conrod bolts you know internal engine components that you really don't want letting go at high rpm uh, so i guess what i've said in a sort of long-winded way is that you want a rev limiter to protect your engine so you don't get carried away one day get caught up in the moment and buzz the thing just a little too high and pop it because that would be a bad day for everyone and then i also let my friends drive this car on track days and stuff and some of them are how do i put it nicely uh, low on mechanical sympathy <laughs> they like to thrash the shit out of it basically so it's a little bit of a protection from them as well so that's the Y covered, now onto the installation. And if you get yourself one of these Omex kits, they are relatively easy to install if you have access to a multimeter and can solder. There are a few versions of the kit available. The basic version, it just has three wires. Uh, I'd probably go for this if I had the choice again, but then there's the slightly more expensive units. One has a shift light, I think, and then there's this one, which has the launch control button. So there's just an extra wire for that. But first up, let's look at the three wires that are common to all of these kits. Okay, so in the glove box here is where I've installed the Omex control box. I've gone for the stealth approach. Uh, and out of this, we have the three common wires to all these kits, the red wire, the blue wire, and the black wire. So let's start off with the red wire. And this needs to be connected to a 12 volt switched live. And what that means is a 12 volt source that becomes live when you switch the ignition of the car on. Now you can get this from anywhere, behind the dash. Uh, the instructions actually suggest getting it from the positive side of the coil, but that's an unnecessarily long run of wire from where we are here. So instead I've chosen to take it from this spade on the side of the fuse box here. So this one is permanent live and this one is switched live, but I already know this. If you don't, how do you test for it? Well, it's pretty simple. Grab your multimeter and set it to DC voltage. As we're measuring for 12 volts, I've set this to 20 and simply ground the black terminal. So I've got mine on the side of the engine block here and then touch the red terminal on your source. So I'll start with a permanent live. Right, so the multimeter is showing 12 volts and the ignition in the car is off. So that has confirmed that that is a permanent live and it's no good for our rev limiter. So I'm gonna test the next one in exactly the same way. Okay, this one is showing zero volts, so I'm going to hop into the car, switch the ignition on, and then repeat this process. Okay, with the ignition on, we've now got 12 volts here, so we've confirmed that this is a switched live, which is what we want. So once you've found yours, you can splice into it by crimping or soldering. Soldering preferably, but either will do. Um, and don't forget, if you've got any bare wires, to heat shrink them or wrap them in insulation tape to prevent them from shorting out. As this was just a spade connector on the side of the fuse box, I've just crimped a female spade on the end of the wire here and then just pushed it on there. There we go, that's the switch live taken care of. Okay, what's next? Well, let's look at the blue wire, the signal wire. And this is the wire that lets this little box of tricks do its thing, and it needs to be connected to the negative side of the coil. So, first issue, you'll notice we're in the interior here, the coil is in the engine bay, so we need to find a way through into there with this wire. 
Okay, so basically we need to get through this big sheet of metal here, which separates the interior from the engine bay. It's commonly referred to as the bulkhead or the firewall. And if you look at yours, you should see a number of locations where things like wires, cables, uh, linkages pass through it, linkages for steering and pedals, for example. Uh, you might also see a few spare holes not doing anything even better. Uh, you could potentially drill a new hole if you wanted to, but I'd always recommend using existing ones if you can. So which one do you choose? Well, whichever is most convenient for you, but I'd always recommend using one with a rubber grommet because you don't want the insulation on the wires wearing through on a sharp edge and then shorting the circuit out. So I've gone for this one down here uh, and once you've got the wire through it's then just a simple case of maneuvering it around various engine components to get it where it needs to be so I've basically followed the path of the original wiring loom uh, near the coil and then broke off crimped a female connector on it and hooked it up to the negative side of the coil and that is the blue wire taken care of so finally then is the black wire or the earth wire. Uh, so first up, what is an earth or a ground? Well, it's basically any connection to the body or the chassis of the vehicle. As most cars these days are negative ground, meaning that the negative side of the battery is connected to the body of the car. That means that connecting anything to it is effectively connecting straight to ground, completing the electrical circuit for whatever electrical component you are wiring up. So I've got my earth underneath the dash here. You do need to make sure it's a good connection, but once you get that, you should be good to go. And if you've got the basic Omex kit, congrats, you're there, you are fully wired up. I, of course, have the launch control button, so that's just one extra wire, which I've run from the control box to where the choke cable used to come out here, which is where I've got the launch button installed, and then you do need to ground the launch button as well, much in the same way as you ground the control box. But that's it, I'm wired up, let's program this thing. Okay, so I've done a factory reset on this device before I film this video, which basically sets the rev limiter by default to 6,000 RPM and the launch to 5,000 RPM. Now, I want my upper limit to be set at 6,500 RPM for street driving. If I go to the track, I'd probably bump it up to 6,800, 6,900 maybe, but general use street driving, 6,500 is fine. So that needs to be 500 RPM more than the factory setting. So here's how you set it. Switch the ignition of the car on, but don't start it. Now go to your control box and press both buttons simultaneously until the LEDs flash. Like that. Okay, now you can use your up and down arrows to set the rev limit. Each press, each way equals 100 RPM. So I need to increase the rev limiter by 500 RPM. So that's five pushes on the up arrow. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. That's done. Now you can switch the ignition off and that setting should be stored in there. So now we can do the launch control and to set this, hold down the launch button and switch the ignition on. There we go. The LED should flash on the control unit to let you know launch control can now be set. So release the button and then program much in the same way as before. So it's set at 5,000 RPM now. I'm gonna go for 4,500, so that's 500 RPM less than the factory setting, so that is five presses on the down arrow. One, two, three, four, five. Cool, that's done, ignition off. And that setting is stored also. So boom, there we go, we've set our limiters. The upper limit now should be at 6,500 RPM and the launch control should be at 4,500 RPM. So let's test it.
Okay, so there we go. That's how to install and program one of these devices. Just really simple, really effective bit of kit. I've got to be honest, I don't find myself using the launch control button much. Uh, I probably could have done without it. But the rev limiter is a very useful safety net protecting this engine from me or whoever else might be driving it. Cool. That about wraps up another tech tip video. I'll be doing a similar type thing next month on the axle location kit that's on this car. So stay tuned for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you want to stay up to date with what's going on here, subscribe to the channel. Thank you. I'll see you for the next video.